Hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. I grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This week we'll be going over sort of a, a, more of a best and worst features kind of deal. We're going to be looking at stuff such as mission tables, island expeditions, borrowed power, legendaries, titan forging, all of that stuff. We're going to be going over the good points, bad points. There might just be bad points for some of these things. Um, but yeah, we'll be going over all of that. First thing I do want to say, hope you had a great holiday. It is coming up to the new year, a couple of days, I think, from when this episode goes live. So I hope you enjoy your New Year's Eve and day. I will not see you until the new year after this episode. So I will catch you then, hopefully. But let's get straight into the weekly news. Basil, Zakali Elders and uh, Aerostar are your weekly world bosses located in uh, the Azure Span, Darylak Caverns, that's always the one that gets me, and the Emerald Dream. Battlegrounds are your bonus event for this week. You get more honour, I think it's 50%, um, more honour by completing Battlegrounds, so you can gear up new characters, and uh, if you really want, you can make some gold this way because you can now purchase herbs, minerals, stuff like that with honor so definitely a way to spend your honor and don't forget to uh utilize that because you have probably been sat at on a cap for the past 20 seasons going all the way back to about burning crusade time so make sure that you're actually spending your honor on stuff that's useful shadowpan showdown is your brawl for the week this is a 6v6 yes in the Shanopan Monastery Arena, you each have a boss that you need to kill of the opposing faction, and uh, you have to do this while uh, fighting the opposing team as well. So you're having to fight for dominance of the boss as well as uh, sort of map control and area control. Um, I believe you always get a healer in this, one healer, five DPS, and uh, when you die, you res uh after 30 seconds again and get back into the fray it's quite a fun uh brawl i'm not gonna lie it's one of my favorite to be honest with you fortified afflicted and raging are your mythic affixes for the week fortified the non-boss enemies have more health and deal more damage afflicted i still have not i i feel like you have to heal this one or like cure it or dis uh dispel it why did i say dispel like that um yeah i believe it's one of them and raging when the mobs get to below 30% uh, of their health, they gain a 100% damage increase. And you can soothe this, kite it, kill them quickly, heal for your tank, you know, anything like that. Because it is not a good idea to get hit by these mobs, I will say that much. So, let's get into some of the best and worst features of WoW. I'm not going to lie, some of these, pretty much most that I've got down here, are... More worse features than good features is the best way that we'll put this. So, mission tables we'll start off with. Something very, very simple. What mission tables are, essentially you have... Uh, uh, these were brought in uh, during Warlords of Draenor, and this was your garrison mission table. Now, your garrison mission table, you sent followers, which you earn via questing, via doing certain uh, rares, by doing certain you know objectives out in the world you'd get a follower and these followers you could have up to 20 25 of them active at a time and you'd level them up you'd gear them up at certain like, rates and then you send them on missions and these missions vary in terms of their reward so at level what level were we when we hit wall as a drain at 100 the max level you would get a certain amount of gold you could get some reputation you could get a item you could even get some like runes. So these augment runes are for raiding, for mythic dungeons. They they just increase your stats, that kind of deal. Um, now, these mission tables aren't the worst, but since Shadowlands was the last iteration of the mission table, you don't see people in Dragonflight right now saying, oh my God, I miss my mission table. I really wish they had them in Dragonflight. You, you don't see anyone saying that. Because mission tables have been in the game since Wall of the Draenor. You have Wall of the Draenor, Legion mission tables. Then you had Battle for Azeroth mission tables. Yep. And then you had Shadowlands. Seems we're going from BFA to Shadowlands. But yeah, that's what we did. Um, yeah, we, we've had four expansions worth of mission tables in a row. And I think people are just kind of sick of them. 
So mission tables were amazing in Warlords of Draenor. They were amazing for one feature only, and that was it made you so much gold you never had to leave your garrison. And they actually patched it so that you can't receive gold from your garrison mission tables anymore in uh, Warlords of Draenor. You can receive some gold for Battle for Azeroth, for Legion, for Shadowlands, stuff like that. But it's very minuscule. It's 700 gold. And in today's sort of wow economy, as it were, it really isn't a lot. But you could make hundreds of thousands a day in Warlords to Train or just from your mission table alone. So you'd log on, do your mission table, send your followers out, set a timer, come back four hours later, and you would have gotten your gold. That, that was it. And then you send them out again and rinse and repeat. It's really simple. But that's essentially what was happening. And that isn't a good way for a game to be designed, is it? Let's face it. it it's a very shit way for a game to be designed. And they did improve on the mission tables in Legion. They actually meant something because you get currency from them. So Primordial Saranites, um, you can get, I forget the name of it, but it's like a rune thing. Augmented rune. It, it, it's something that you got on Argus. They were very useful just to get like some passive income from that because that helped you buy certain things or get a certain rep, you know, all of that stuff. Um, they weren't the greatest. I'm not going to lie. They've tried it for four expansions. It really hasn't worked. No one's been going to their mission table day in, day out just to get like some extra gold. It's a bit of a annoyance, to be honest, to try and keep track of your followers, especially in the earlier days when you had to gear up your followers as well. So when they hit max level, um, they had an item level, which is their secondary sort of leveling process. Their item level in Legion starts at 700 and you can get them up to a maximum of I think 900, I don't know, I'm just very much guesstimating there. I think it was between 8 and 900. But essentially, the item level that uh, they had, the more chance that they would succeed. You know, certain missions required certain item levels, otherwise it would just not move the percentage chance of it completing, you know, that kind of deal. It it wasn't looked fondly upon, and I don't think anyone's going to miss it. But I think they need to do something where it's a bit more cosmetic-based, So I think the ones in Shadowlands weren't as bad because you could earn mounts from them. And these mounts were actually quite cool. You could earn a specific mount for each covenant. So was it each covenant? Yeah. I believe you could earn like a plague hound for Maldraxxus, um, a giant worm thing grub from, what is it, Night Fae. You could earn the Larian from uh, Kyrian. What was the other one? Venthyr was probably one of the big dragon boys, the gargoyles. But don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure. Um, but these were these were good because they were set at the same item level. So it was a, the same difficulty mission. The only difference is some of the covenants had better followers. So having the better followers meant it was a more increased chance of you actually completing the mission because it wasn't an easy mission at the start it really wasn't so having the better followers meant that you had more of a chance to get there and then you know all that kind of stuff so that was a bit of an annoyance they should have just made it exactly the same all of the followers have the same ability stuff like that i get that it's like oh my god this is so cool and so like nuance and you know it's cool that they each have their own different things but then it is a balancing issue and that's a problem really so no one's going to really miss mission miss mission tables. Uh, if I give it a rating, mission tables, I'd say five out of ten. It's nothing too memorable. It's nothing that like people are going to be like, oh my god, these were amazing, or oh my god, these were shit. Some of them were shit though. Um, but yeah, it's a simple five out of ten. Weapon skills is the next one I want to look at. Weapon skills existed until Cataclysm. So take your mind back twenty years. Um, you had classic uh, Burning Crusade, Wrath the Lich King. You had something that was called weapon skills. Now, these weapon skills went up to, I think, at the end of Wrath of the Lich King, 400. And uh, if you start one out of 400 on your weapon skill, you're going to miss your attacks. It's how pro- proficient you are in this weapon. So, essentially, if you get max weapon proficiency, which, by the way, 
you just sit there and hit stuff with like that that is it like nothing else you will have the most chance at hitting the mob that you're attacking so what you would have to do is say you were using a sword your entire character's like lifespan and then you got a really good axe upgrade what you have to do is equip this axe go find a mob and then just swing at it and the thing is this mob won't die for about five minutes while you're learning the very early stages of your weapon so every swing will be an extra level proficiency until you get to about 50 before uh your maximum so about 350 out of 400 then it'll be every two swings up until 360 every three you you get the you get the idea but it took so long to do that it was kind of tedious, hence why they took it out in Cataclysm, because they would just have to keep increasing the number of or the weapon proficiency. So it would have went up to 425 in Cataclysm, 450 in Missa Pandaria, 475 in... Uh, oh God, what's the expansion after? Warlords of Draenor? Yes. Um, you know, that kind of deal. And it just gets tedious. The thing is, there was a way around this, um, in Classic and the Burning Crusade, there were these mobs that the, were in Blasted Lands, and these mobs simply could not die. They cannot die unless you had a certain quest item that would capture their soul, essentially, so they would stay on one HP forever, indefinitely. Um, what you would do is you would AFK and essentially just melee hit this mob. If you're a class that had like some sort of self-healing or anything like that, that you could just simply AFK, right-click the mob and walk away for an hour or so, you will be max weapon level. Like you can go watch YouTube, you can do whatever. But in the Wrath of the Lich King, they made it so that you couldn't gain weapon proficiency from hitting these mobs, which made it really tedious to try and kill because it's like, okay, I've got to go hit this level 80 mob now because if I hit a level 10 mob, it will die with one swing and then I've got to find another level 10 mob. And there's always that chance that you're going to hit it even at low weapon proficiency. So, you know, you spend about five minutes trying to hit this level 80 mob, kill it, and then move on to the next and stuff like that. And it it gets kind of tedious because you're like, oh, I really can't be asked doing this, you know, that kind of deal. It is what it is. Weapon skill, I don't think it's really missed. I really don't. I like the idea of having a weapon skill um, and it increasing your damage by a certain percent, depending on, like, if you go above and beyond that weapon proficiencies. Because in Classic, there was a set of gloves called Edge Master's Hand Guards, and these increased your axes, swords, and something else, daggers, I think, by plus seven weapon skill. That was the only stat on them. And if you exceeded the weapon skill, essentially what it did was give you less damage or more damage on a glancing blow. So what a glancing blow did was you hit the target still, but they parry certain amount of damage of it. So a glancing blow would take off 40% of the damage that it would actually do. Whereas if you went each point above that, it would take off an extra 5%, I think it is. So if you have an extra 7, effectively, a glancing blow would only take off 10% of your maximum melee damage, which is really, really strong, because you're getting an extra 30% from nowhere from one piece of gear, which is really good. That's why they were so sought after, by the way, in classic, them gloves. Um, But yeah, that's what weapon proficiency did, and I think it's really cool to have that option as a stat almost because it's like okay i'll give up some stats like strength or mastery haste whatever it is but i have an extra seven in my sword proficiency so therefore my damage and you know people nerd people get into like this amount of stuff where it's like okay this is a 0.5 percent damage increase race to well first like players have the people who break down all of their rotations and like what they should do what spells they should press and stuff it's really cool and really fascinating but yeah i I think it's a very good idea that they remove this honestly three out of ten for weapon proficiencies it's a very cool niche thing but it's just it wasn't needed and it's quite an annoyance more so than anything the next one is a little bit more recent this started in Warlords of Draenor, and it is the Pathfinder achievement. 
For those of you that don't know, Pathfinder was always released in patch 0.2 of something. So I believe it was 6.2, 7.2, 8.2, 9.2, 10.2, and no, not 10.2, sorry. Uh, Dragonflight did not have a Pathfinder achievement. Actually, it does, but it doesn't do the same thing. Um, what Pathfinder did was essentially you had to complete a certain amount of achievements. I think it's like around about 8, 8 to 10. And these would be do a certain amount of quests, get certain reputations, etc., etc. And then you would be able to fly in the zone that has uh, just been released. So whether it be Waters to Draenor, uh, whether it be Varalis and uh, Zandalari or Zildazar. No, Zan Zandalari, yeah. Um, or if it's uh, it wasn't Argus, you were never allowed to fly on Argus. Broken Isles. You know, you had to complete this achievement to get the flying. Now, some of these achievements were a bit tough because they required reputation, and these reputations were usually exalted. So trying to do that with a very limited time for certain people, if they couldn't do it, was a bit of a challenge and quite an annoyance. Um, so in Dragonflight, they essentially let everyone do what they want in terms of flying was unlocked immediately with dragon riding which is one of the best changes that they've ever done in the game i really do have to say that um dragon riding as a whole has been one of the best features in the game oh shit i could have added dragon riding into uh the best and worst features ah uh, we'll get to that um <laughs> and, and that one just came across my mind um but yeah, essentially, this is what the Pathfinder achievement did. It unlocked flying for you. And it was so annoying because some people had it immediately. Some people had it a few months after it released. And some people never got it because they couldn't be asked. Which, honestly, fair play. Because some of these Pathfinder achievements were annoying. It really were. So Pathfinder achievement gets a 2 out of 10. It just wasn't necessary. People would have been more than happy to just pay for like the service to fly in these zones, it really isn't that bad. Um, yeah, they, there should have been a way around the Pathfinder achievement, essentially. There should have been a buyable option, like there has been in Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, Cataclysm, all the expansions prior to that, where you can just buy the flying, and that's it. Like, you don't have to deal with this shitty achievement. Um, the next one is uh, Island Expeditions. Now, Island Expeditions were sold as one of the main focusing points of uh, Battle for Azeroth. What you did in these island expeditions was it, you group with two other players, so a group of three of you, and you had to get a certain amount of Azerite, whether it be 6,000, 9,000, or 12,000, I think the increments were. And uh, each, obviously, was a difficulty. So 6,000 was normal, and then you got heroic, and then you got mythic at 12,000. Um the idea of this was you go around, explore the islands, find treasures, kill big bads and stuff like that, um, and you're competing against the opposing faction, a horde faction. Now, some of these were players. Some of these, uh, depending on if you signed up for the PvP version, uh, would be NPCs. Now, these NPCs weren't the best or the quickest at doing this. They were very good, and there was a chance that you could lose, which was always a bonus in terms of like gameplay content because you need to feel like it's somewhat difficult and it's not just a steamroll um but essentially the whole premise of it was uh, go around collect these chests find really cool cosmetic things you know kill big bads have like certain events happen on the island which stuff did there was storms there was uh, like frost events there was fire events you know big bads from all over the plains it's that kind of thing but essentially the way that it turned out was okay group of three of you best way to do this now there's a community thing more than anything but people found out the best way to f win essentially and it was to group up mobs and aoe them down that was it just aoe farm that that was that was the extent of island expeditions. You didn't do anything else. You just grouped up a shit ton of mobs and AOE'd them down. And this wouldn't have been a viable option if certain people wanted mounts. So the way that mounts and cosmetics and pets and all of that stuff are earned is just by winning, essentially. It's a random chance at the end of the expedition to get them. Now, if they made it so that you have to discover a certain chest... You had to do like a certain achievement in the like island expedition to unlock this mount or the potential for getting it. 
then it would be like, okay, we've got to unlock this chest and then we can look to like farm the mobs or we've got to, you know, kill certain mobs in this zone alone and then it unlocks a secret passageway, you know, all that kind of shit. Um, I think it would have been more engaging rather than just group up mobs, kill, cool, let's go. That's it, done. And this was the best way to get Azerite at the time um, for the expansion. So it was very much just uh, go in, kill mobs, get your Azerite, cool, nice, queue it up again, do the same thing, do the same thing, you know, rinse and repeat, and that's just not fun. You need to have a different, you need to like differ it, essentially. Each island expedition should have been, okay, you get... They should have had a bonus event where, like, chests have, like, 200% more Azerite in them or something like that. You know, that you can have a mob so one where it's, like, mobs grant 50% more Azerite. Um, elite mobs grant 500% more Azerite or, like, but they have to be killed solo or something like that. You know, all of that stuff. They, they could have really changed it up and mixed up with Island Expeditions, but I, I don't think it was a bad thing. I think it was just kind of abandoned halfway through to maybe focus on like maybe Torghast or something in the next expansion. But yeah, they they probably realized that it wasn't a fan favorite island expedition. So they did kind of just abandon it, abandon it like halfway through the expansion, in my opinion. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It, it's a good idea. I think it just could have been polished a bit more. The last one I do want to talk about is Borrowed Power. Borrowed Power has its ups and downs. It always has in World of Warcraft. But the first Borrowed Power that we ever got was Legion. Now, this was from the artifact weapons. So, Ashbringer, you had... Why didn't Arcane Mages get Atiesh? I'm guessing because Khadgar wills it in lore. Um, but you have Felomalorn... You have Apocalypse, you have Blades of the Fallen Prince, you know, all of these really cool weapons. And these weapons, you leveled up, like, through the expansion with them. But sadly, at the end of the expansion, they took away their power. This is uh, primarily because otherwise, having these weapons in lore going forward, you would be ridiculously powerful. Like, stupidly powerful. So... You essentially drain the power from the weapon to save the world, which makes a lot of sense. But when your whole rotation and your whole sort of damage rotation is built around these weapons and then suddenly they're taken away, it's very tough to be like, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. I'm just back to the bare bones of pressing Templar's Verdict and nothing else, whereas you get Wake of Ashes from your Ashbringer one, which is in the game now. I'm pretty sure they moved it to a talent in uh, Battle for Azeroth after Legion. But, you know, you get these really powerful, like, abilities, and then suddenly it's gone. That's the same with the Azerite stuff. Um, you get these really powerful abilities, which I don't think are in the game anymore. They're in the game, but, like, you actively can't use them in the game. There was, like, a giant beam that you could use from your heart of Azeroth. There was uh, like multiple different things. There was just like a concentrated flame where it's a one minute cooldown, but the damage is increased by a hundred percent up to three like uses. And that's a really cool mechanic. But again, you don't have that in your rotation and people would have been using that in their rotation for maybe a year or something and gotten used to it. And then it's like, Oh shit, I don't have that anymore. What fills the void here? Like, you're completely changing your rotation based on this borrowed power, and it's not good. And the way that you farm your borrowed power, if you ever missed a week, you were always behind. It's like almost impossible to catch up, I swear. You felt so much weaker than someone else who hadn't missed a single day of their like grind, essentially. And that shouldn't be the case. There should be catch-up mechanics. There should be ways to get around it if you ever introduce borrowed power again. But Dragonflight has no such borrow power, and yet it's looked upon as one of the more favourable expansions because everything is very consistent. We know that we're not going to miss out on anything when the expansion ends, such as like in Battle for Azeroth, we missed out on Azerite power. In Legion, we missed out on our wet artifact weapons like power. In Shadowlands, we missed out on, I think, our legendaries. Yeah, our two legendaries that basically made the class what it is. Um, or like an entire sort of uh, thingy, what do you call it? 
like rotation or like DPS output, healing output. Actually, the legendaries weren't the f- the borrow power in uh, Shadowlands. That was the covenants. That was your like renown, and your renown was locked like each week. You had to do certain things each week to do it. So if you missed one, you were fucked. You had no chance. Like l- literally, you would have been always behind until they brought in the uh, catch up mechanic, which isn't good. That shouldn't be ever a thing in the game. But essentially, borrow power. The first time we had it was in Legion, and it was a very fun experience to have. But that should have been it. That really should have been it, because they tried to do it in Battle for Azeroth. Didn't work. They tried to do it in Shadowlands. Didn't work. Like, they, they needed to just have Legion, like, have the artifact weapons, and it's like, we really need these weapons to defeat this massive army that has been plaguing us since Warcraft, essentially. The, like, be- before World of Warcraft was even here, like Warcraft, Warcraft, the um, RPG. It is an RPG, right? Um, I think so. Probably labelled it wrong. But um, yeah, like we needed these weapons to defeat them, but we eventually have to get rid of them. That's fine. A one-time use of them is okay, but we had them for the next expansions and it was just a grind. It really was. And now that Dragonflight's rolled around and there's no such borrowed power to grind out, it's actually relieving because you can do whatever you want and not have this like looming feeling for the entire week like, oh my god, I've got to go do my Torghast run. I've got to go do my like Rescue the Souls weekly. I've got to go do my Collect Certain Amount of Anima weekly. Otherwise, I will be behind. There is always that, oh, I can go do some old raids if I want some Transmog. I can just do some random quests if I want. Like, there's no borrowed power and nothing looming over you, and I think that that's always what's best in the game from my personal experience. But that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for listening. As always, do check out all of the socials down below. Constant stuff happening over there. Um, But yeah, I hope you all had a great holiday. hope you all have a great New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, and I will catch you in the New Year's all. Go Valor, friend. Goodbye, all.